I'm Allison. And I'm Lauren. And we are Wake the Talk Up. We are all about making communication everyone's greatest asset. And we teach proprietary techniques to make your conversations more clear, impactful, and connected. Today, we're talking about empathy and vulnerability. And the exchange of um, that in conversation, as well as in the speaking and listening role. So we just thought we would have maybe a couple questions for each other in a little conversation. So Lauren, when was, let's just talk about what vulnerability means literally in today's, um, and how, what it means to different people. Like I know some people that when I said that say, yeah, I felt really vulnerable in that conversation to them. That's a really good thing. And someone else might say, wow, I felt really vulnerable today. And that's a bad thing to them. So what do you think that difference comes from? Yeah, well, the first thing that comes to mind for me is I think there's this connection with vulnerability and safety. Um, vulnerability is, is an act of opening up. And for some people that can actually generate more safety because maybe we're sharing information that we know is going to be productive and help us have our needs met. Whereas for others, opening up in that way might feel unsafe depending on our filters, our biography, our past experiences. So vulnerability can carry some a lot of different associations and connotations. Yeah. And what I'm seeing when I look it up on the internet, nebs, the internebs, interwebs, <laughs> is that um, it's being capable of being physically or emotionally wounded, which obviously doesn't sound good, or open to attack or damage, which also doesn't sound good. And what I'm also reading in there is that it's open and that they're trusting the other people that they're talking to and more importantly themselves so that they that they can handle being open and honest um, and that they won't die or be annihilated if the other person doesn't respond in the way that they would like them to. Yeah, and what you're, what you're really pointing to there, Allison, I think um, is this connection between trust and safety. Oftentimes in life and in conversation, we think safety comes from someone else, the way they're listening to us, the way they're speaking to us, and in reality, at least in our work, and I think we would both say in our own personal experiences, that sense of safety actually comes from trust, trusting within ourselves that we can bring the information forward in a way that, um, in a way that's going to serve us and trusting that we can investigate our internal experience to find the information that we need to have our needs met. Yeah. That trust is an internal, comes from an internal place. Yeah. And that that empathy, when we, when we, empathy being uh, defined as feeling s at least some percentage of what the other person is feeling in terms of their pain or their, their emotions so that we can relate, right? Yeah. And that when we bring empathy into a conversation and model that and invite other people to be empathetic to our vulnerability, it's easier to sort of have a, a, a space that's created, that's self-perpetuating of both empathy and vulnerability on both sides. That's the ripple effect. That's the everything is contagious, which is one of the eight ways to make communication your greatest asset, our free mini course, just a little, little plug for that. And so something that we notice in conversation with others is empathy and vulnerability um, are not something that we can ask the other person to create, right? We can only control our own actions and our own choices. However, if we lead with empathy, if we lead with vulnerability, we're very likely to be met with it as well. Yeah, I love that. And just lastly, um, how about a little bit of listening versus speaking role in the exchange that we're talking about? When is it hard for you to listen, Lauren? Yeah. Um, well, it's hard for me to listen if I'm not clear on what I need. If I have a specific strategy in mind or an agenda, then I'm listening for confirmation around that agenda or denial, which is actually a more specific way of saying when I want to be right or when. Yeah. I'm yeah. I love that. I, I'm noticing when you say that, that I'm re realizing it's hard for me to listen when I, it's kind of the same thing when I 
think that it's my job to get the other person in the same opinion or story as yeah. mine. It's hard for me to listen when I'm not remembering that I don't have to agree with the other person in order to listen and understand and reflect back to them. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, it's also hard for me to listen when there are really big emotions at stake or when the person I'm talking to um, has the ability to touch into a really deep emotion, either because they're having an experience that I can relate to, or maybe it's just an intimate relationship, mm -hmm. or there are similarities in this dynamic that remind me of an intimate relationship. Yeah. So what we're experiencing in one conversation can bring up a lot that has actually nothing to do with this specific conversation. And that can block my ability to listen. Yeah. And I'll just say um, that it's easy for me to listen when I don't have a lot of stakes in the game, if that's the right phrase, or if I can remember that whatever they're saying is not necessarily, um, whatever their truth is, is not up for debate. Yeah. I can, it's easier for me to listen when I don't have to debate their truth, that I can remember that I can listen to their truth, reflect it back to them, get curious about it and still have my own truth as separate and autonomous that I can then help them to understand as well later on. You just, you just nailed. Hmm. Yeah. You just hit on a key concept, which is curiosity. So when curiosity is available, listening is, is really easy. When curiosity is not available, listening isn't really, isn't that easy. And just like the contagiousness of vulnerability and empathy, if we can be curious with ourselves, then we can be more curious with others as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we could talk forever about empathy and vulnerability and why it's so important in conversation with others and in conversation with ourselves. We get into this a whole lot more deeply in our intensive online course, which begins mid-August of this year. We also do custom versions of that for groups and teams. If you like what you're hearing right now, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And check out our website in the links below, wakethetalkup.com. Wake up, sunshine. Open up your sleeping.